some time and it refused to work. I have no idea what's going on, but I rebuke the devil in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we come this morning in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, I thank you for this day that we never seen before. 
God, I thank you for new mercy and new grace today, oh God. I thank you for patience this morning, oh God. I thank you for joy in the Rosh Harkosh. God, I thank you for you are a loving God. I thank you, Father, because you are the one true God. I thank you, Father, that you was there from the beginning, from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. God, I thank you for loving us so much that you sent your sure Messiah, your son, into this world to die for the sins of the world that we would no longer live in sin, but we would serve you, O oh God. And God, I bless your holy name. God, I bless each and every one that come today. I said, bless them in a special way. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to receive. God, I ask you to move by this through this world today. God, that you would have mercy on this entire world, oh God, because you have people all over this world. And God, I ask you to send a word today. A word that would bless, a word that would encourage, a word that would strength, a word that would build up, a word that would bring forth conversion, a word that would deliver. God, in the name of Yeshua, God, I thank you and I give you praise, honor, and glory. And I said, let the Rosh Harko speak and teach today. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I hope you can see me out there because my camera just really dark and I just don't know what happened this morning. Actually, I have been doing good and I said, thank you, Lord. I have had no problem with that camera going dark and today it happened and I think that was last night when I actually said that. I guess the devil said I'll mess this up, but I always say. He can hinder us, but praise God, he cannot stop us. So just in case we have anyone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. If we believe on God and believe God raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead, that's what justifies us. The same way our father Abraham was justified. Then we are to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart men continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithfully just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, uh, 13 said, He that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. So thank you once again for joining us. You are always welcome. Uh, we are continuing with our study, going back to the foundation of the world. But we're going to use many references before we get back into Genesis chapter number three. But that's still our focus chapter, looking at how sin was always there from the foundation of the world. And how God sent Yeshua to deliver us from sin, that we would no longer serve sin, but we would serve God. So sin is no longer credit imputed unto us. That's why David speak of blessed is the one whose sin is not imputed. That means it's no longer put up on us because of the first Adam. Because we have a second Adam. When we are in Yeshua the Messiah, he is the second Adam from heaven. And so again, uh, I pray the word of God would be a blessing to you. And I pray that you study the word of God for yourself. I pray that you always go back and search out the scriptures for yourself. Use different translation so it would be more clearer to us. Uh, I say to people that I use three translation most of the time, but I really teach out a complete Jewish Bible. But I use King James sometimes, and sometimes I use 
A and P because they give us a little more information. I always say God's word is like a puzzle. You're not going to find everything in John chapter 3, 16. <laughs> because that, again, is for the world. It's not for believers. It's for the whole world. That's why it says, whosoever believeth in him, that means those are the people that are in him, should, S-H-O-U-L-D, not perish, but have everlasting life. And so I like to study and seek out the word of God. I like to take key words and search those words out because words are very important whether we believe it or not. And sometimes when we study in the word of God, we do not focus on words, which mean like if, but, should, shall, thou, and all of that, you know, may, will. All those words a little, but they are so powerful when it gets to the word of God. So Eve was deceived, but Adam was the transgressor. And that's coming out again, Genesis chapter 3, and we will be getting back into that. So what I'm going through is just highlighting certain things that we're going to cover. Uh, it's out there on Facebook as well. I put, a, as I said before, I put a lot of information out there most of the time because I'm hoping people get hungry and study for themselves. That's why I put all that information out there, not just to be putting it out there. And I don't think, and I'm beginning to wonder if anybody will ever read it. Uh, because sometimes people come on the video two or three minutes, and sometimes they're gone. Sometimes they may come on and they hear me going through justification, how to be saved, need to be baptized. And they say, oh, she's teaching the same thing, but not realize it. I go through those steps because if you're not in Christ, the word of God is going to be foolish. The word of God will not even make sense. And so the first thing is to do is get someone justified by their faith into Christ then they can start understanding the word of God because the fool have said in his heart there is no God. So since the fool believed there is no God, how are they going to understand the word of God when they cannot even understand there is a God? And also that Yeshua Jesus is the son of God. And Yeshua Jesus did not come about in Matthew. He was there from the foundation of the world. That's how God created everything through Yeshua the Messiah, where a few teaching ago, we went through so many scriptures that explain that. And sometimes we can't understand that because we do not search out the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. I actually was uh, playing a video and uh, actually when I turned, up, turned the video off from YouTube, it came on uh, channel, I think it's 54 or 52 here in Georgia. And sure enough, there go two people teaching and what they were still teaching, I could not believe. Like, my God, can't people see the truth? Like, what's going on? Is, you know, a person can try to live for God and they can try to live a holy life uh, for God, but Many times, those same people, they don't know who Jesus is. They can't rightly divide the word of truth because they do not go back to the foundation of the world to see that he was always there from the foundation of the world. That's why the Bible said the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. And when you just keep uh, studying that and follow that all the way back to the book of Revelation, the living water. We can see that's who is speaking of, Yeshua Jesus. And so when people fall back into darkness and they die in that darkness, where do we think they are going? going? They're not going to the place they hope they are going to because they have went away from their first belief. Believing that there is a God, believing that Yeshua died for our sins and God raised him three days later from the dead, believing the truth. But many of us have fallen away from the truth because we do not realize that's the purpose of Satan, to try our faith. Satan is always going to and fro in the earth, seeking whom he may 
they devour. We see that in Peter. And that's why the Bible says, after you have suffered for a while. That means Satan's going to come and try to destroy us. He's going to come and try to steal our faith. Well, you can't steal what a person never had in the first place. So I'm just praying that people get hungry and that God open their eyes so they can see spiritually. Because if we're not seeing in the spirit, we'll miss him. That's why when we look at uh, uh, Stephen, when Stephen was filled with the Holy Ghost, the Rosh HaKosh, the Bible said he looked straight up into heaven. And he confessed what he believed, showing that it's so important to confess what we believe. So what did he confess? He said, I see Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, standing on the right hand of God. Well, he, the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Ghost. That's how he was able to see it. Some of us are saying we're filled with the Rush Hard Coach Holy Ghost, but we're not seeing right. We can see how Peter, Peter was able to see the truth. He knew the truth. He confessed the truth, and that's why he became what? Solid as a rock. Going back to Matthew chapter 16, people need to study that. When Jesus asked 12 disciples, who do men say the Son of Man is? And when we, those of us who read the Word of God, we know 11 did, it, did not answer. That was 12 disciples, only one. That was Simon Peter when he said, Thou art the Messiah, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. So people wonder why I teach this so many times. Because so many people are in darkness. That's why. So many people can't see. That's why. And that's why Yeshua says, I mean, Yeshua says to Peter, he says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. He said, my father, it was my father in heaven. He was in the earth. He said, it, it was my father in heaven. And upon this rock, upon your faith, Peter, that's what it was. Peter became solid in his faith, solid as a rock. The Bible said we were to be solid, unmovable. And so when Yeshua said, it was my father that revealed that to you. And upon this rock, what rock? The foundation that the church is to be built upon. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So why do we think the gates of hell is prevailing? Because we're not standing on the solid rock. Christ was a rock. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, it takes you back to Exodus. Where it show you Christ was that rock. And how Christ went before Israel. And how God was not well pleased with many. And many died in the wilderness. In other words, the wilderness is a place of testing. As Yeshua went to the wilderness of testing. As Israel was taken to the mountain of sin for testing. And we know those of us who studied the word of God, all that went into that wilderness did not come out. We have people today coming out of the wilderness, but they're going right back in. They are falling in darkness. As I said to someone not long ago, a pastor, I said, remember, it took Moses to bring people out of Egypt, but it took a Joshua to take them all the way to the promised land. Well, when we think about this, many of us are just trying to get people saved, so we say. But not giving people a revelation of that word saved. Not giving people a revelation that saved doesn't mean one thing. Saved means to be delivered. What you need to do, go back and look at the word saved. It's in the Bible, I'm thinking 200 and some times. And so, whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, the name of the Lord shall be saved. He that confesses and forsakes his sin, 
so far, so many times that word in the Bible. But we just think John 3.16 got a person into Yeshua and got them into heaven and through the gates. Oh no, you're wrong. You're listening to live spirit. And it's amazing to me that people rather stay in darkness than to walk in the light. They rather believe a lie than to believe the truth. They go by what grandma said, grandpa said, pastor said, and they forget all about what Yeshua Jesus said, what God the Father said. That's why you focus. What did Yeshua Jesus teach when he came to the earth? He came to the earth to bring forth truth because many liars had went before him. That's why in John chapter 1, it said the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth. See, many people talk about grace, but they forget about truth. But grace and truth came through Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes people are not looking at where Yeshua says, I don't even teach my own words. My father gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should do. We should not teach our own word, people of God. We should teach what is it written down in the word of God. And then be careful about different translations. Because some of those translations can really deceive us. As I put out there today, and I'll get to it as I go forward. I won't expound. That was the rush, uncle. Didn't know I was going to say that. He was deceived, but Adam was the transgressor. That's in Genesis chapter 3 again. Title, freedom. Freedom was always there from the foundation of the world. The freedom to accept or reject spiritual guidance. We even have freedom to do that. We have freedom. We can accept it. And then we can what? Reject it. Because God gives us what? He gives us freedom. And it's up to us to walk in that freedom. The word of God is alive. It's not dead. The Word of God is alive. The Word of God is alive. The Word of, you know why it's alive? Because there's spirit. That's why. Yeshua tell us my words, they're spirit, and they are life. So that's why the Word of God is alive. It's not dead. It is, it is at work and is sharper than any double-edged sword. So shoot for the heart. Why did I say that? Since it's alive and it's sharper than a double-edged sword, why are we not using it to help change people's heart? So that's why I said shoot for the heart. See, many of us are shooting for the flesh. We're not shooting for the heart. We are shooting for the flesh. What am I saying? We are teaching prophesying, saying things that people want to hear. People have itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. So since they have itching ears, not a heart after God, not ears to hear the truth, they, don't, they do not want to hear sound doctrine. So people keep shooting at their flesh. You shoot for the heart because that's what needs to be changed. Your flesh is always going to desire what's evil. Your flesh is always want something that it should not have. Your flesh is what get you into trouble. That's why the first Adam was flesh. But the second Adam was spiritual. That's Yeshua the Messiah. That's why I said the Lord is the second Adam from heaven. And he is the one that give forth spirit. He came to what? Not only save and deliver us out of the world, but save me to deliver us from all our sins. That's why he said, I'll thoroughly cleanse my floor. Other words, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, I'm going to clean what's matter. Your hearts. 
See, you clean the cup up in the inside. Then the cup, then people can clean themselves up on the outside. We can go and try to prophesy. We can go and, and, and sing a lot of songs and get people happy just like when they go to the drug house or they are, are drunk on alcohol or whatever. But what happened when they come down? The same problems that they had before. So what's going to change people is the engrafted word of God. What is written in the word of God, that's what's going to transform us. The Bible said, be ye transformed by what? Renewing your mind. Get the old stuff out of your mind and put the new word in your mind because that's what's going to change us. So a man thinketh, so is he. Think righteousness, you'll do righteousness. But if you think it doesn't matter, you're not going to do it. If you think it is not required, why should you do it? It is required in stewardship that a man be found perfect. And people just keep saying nobody's perfect but Jesus. That's because we are not studying the word of God. Many people had perfect heart. Even David had a perfect heart toward God. Even Solomon started out with a perfect heart toward God. But he did not continue. See, the key is... It's not how you start, but how you finish. Many of us start out right, but we're not finishing right. So you can start a race, sit down in the race, never run the race. So how can you complete the race? No, you enter in a race to run it. You enter to a race to finish it. That's why Yeshua said, it is finished. And most people thought he was speaking only about when he died. No, he, he meant I have finished everything my father gave me to do up until this point. Did he come back? Absolutely. That means he had other work to do. That's why the Bible says work out your own salvation, work out your own deliverance. People, we have work to do. We need to work out our own deliverance. Work out our own salvation. That's what it is. You can't just come to, well, you can do whatever you want, but you should not expect that you can just come into Christ, sit down, do nothing, and you're going to enter into those gates. You're listening to a lying spirit, and that will not make you free. Why do we think people are not changing? Because we're not teaching what should be taught, taught. We're doing a lot of hooping and hollering. As I said before, the Lord said to me many years ago, my church has become like a drug house, like a nightclub. People do not go to church for healing. They go for a feeling. You can go to church and feel good, but that doesn't make you good. It's going to take the word of God to change our lives. Even we can teach the word of God, but it's up to you and everybody else and myself to receive it. We can't make people receive it, well, but we better teach it. Other words, we're going to have blood on our hands. According to the book of Ezekiel, if you teach them right, then the blood is not on your hand. If you tell them what I said, that blood is not on your hand. But if you do not, the blood is on your hand. And right now, people's blood is on a lot of these pastors and prophets and teachers and evangelists' hands. Because they are not teaching to bring forth transformation. They're teaching what people want to hear. It's in ears. That's why people go to these prophets. They want to hear exactly what they want to hear. No, you better hear from Yeshua because he's the greatest prophet. He was the prophet way before Moses. That's why Moses said, God is going to raise up a prophet like unto me. But he was there from the foundation of the world. Just people could not see him as people can't see him today. That was the Rosh Hakosh, Holy Ghost. Freedom. 
the freedom to accept or reject spiritual guidance. The Word of God, again, is alive. It is at work and is sharper than any double-edged sword. So the Word is not to cut you down. It's not to cut me down. It's to cut Satan down. See, we're to use the Word of God against Satan. So sometimes people think the word of God is to destroy them. No. It destroys the evil spirit in us. That's what it's for. Because everything that's not like God, everything not like the Son of God, is garbage. It's sin. And so the word comes to us to let us know what God said and what the devil is saying. But many of us are to listen to the devil. Because the devil's going to tell me exactly what makes my flesh feel good. He's never going to tell you anything to make you good. Because some lying spirit says no one was good but God. Because they are not listening to the word of God. That's why Yeshua says, I always use the scripture to explain what I'm saying. Because people say that's not right if they don't know the word of God. If the good man had known, remember that one, that the thief was coming, he would not have suffered his house to be robbed. That's why we're to beware. Because the good man know what the devil is up to. But the wicked man do not know the devil trying to take you right where he's at and all his little imps. Hallelujah. Shoot for the heart. The power of the engrafted word. That's power in the word of God. Power. It's just like uh, my TV. If that TV is plugged in and all the components is in the right place, will it play? Absolutely. But what happens if something is wrong? Uh, although it, uh, everything is right with the TV, but what happened if I pull the plug? It's not going to play because it's not connected to the power source. Why do we think Yahshua says in John chapter 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you are to be what? Producing fruit. But if you are not producing fruits, you will be cut off and cast into the fire. And some people, I don't know if they read it or they think he's talking about apples and oranges and an apple tree. No, we are the tree. My father is the husband, the head, and I am the true vine. And you are the branches. And any branch that does not produce fruit will be cut off. And the one that produced, my father going to purge it, that it will produce more fruit. Spiritual fruits had nothing to do with oranges and apples, like some people think. That's the Holy Ghost. The power of the engrafted word. Although the word of God is powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword, we can reject it. You know why? We're free. We're free. He's not going to make us receive his word. He wants us because his will is that all human, uh, all human beings, all mankind, all humans be saved, but not just that, and come to the full knowledge of the truth. That's the problem. Many people saved, adopted out of the world into the family of God, but they have not came to the full knowledge of the truth. Many people just think because I'm in Christ, that's it. No, that's just the beginning. If you wasn't in Christ, you was in, you was in Satan's camp, I like to say, which means you're in the world. But once you're in Christ, you're to be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. See, I can come and I can even believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That Jesus died for my sin, but not for me to dwell, to continue in sin. He died that I would be like him. Not like the devil. No, because you are whom you yield yourselves to obey. Whether what? Sin 
unto death, that means you continue, continue to sin until you die. Now, I'm not saying you, whoever. I, I, I used to say and still do. If it's for you, repent. If it's not you, let it fall down your back like water. Because it's time for truth, people. Too many people on their way to hell, and they don't even know it. We have so many pastors on their way to hell and letting the devil deceive them. Every time you turn around, you see pastors falling. Why are they falling? Because they're living just like the world. But they're under false security. They're listening to a lie. Once saved, you are always saved. But saved from what? You can be saved out of Egypt and return right back to Egypt. Prove. Israel came out of Egypt. But they turn it back in the heart. See, it's a heart thing. What's in the heart? See, that's what happened to Adam in his heart. He, he didn't confess. He blamed. Until he said, that woman gave it to me. Or blame the Lord. And I ate like we blame everybody for our problems but us. No, we have freedom. We have freedom. We can allow things to happen to us. But when we go out there and sin, we can't blame people for us sinning. We blame ourselves. But when we hide it, we do not confess. We do not come, come clean. That's what start eating us up like cancer and we start falling back into darkness. And we can't see where we are going. Common sense tell you. If it's dark and you're trying to walk around the house, you're going to bump into something. Why? Because of the darkness. But Yeshua is the light. His word is light. But if we do not want it, what do we think going to happen to us? We're going to fall into darkness. We're not going to follow him. See, my sheep hear my voice and they do follow me. He didn't say my sheep is hearing all these other people's voices. He said, my voice. Now, how do we know we are hearing his voice? When we hear his word, we're hearing his voice. That's how we know. When we hear, I can say anything. You can say anything to me. If I do not know the word of God, people of God, I just might believe it. Because I might just want to believe what I want to believe. That doesn't change God's word. Because I believe some people say it, uh, what is, let me see how my friend used to say, like, whatever you think it is or whatever. No, you can think whatever it is you want. You better think what the word of God said. Because your thinking can get you in, in trouble. My thinking can get me into trouble. So I want to think like my big brother. That's Yeshua, the Messiah, the son of the living God. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? But those who do the will of my father, not those who do my will, but those who do the will of my father in heaven, they are my sisters and brothers and mother. And he never said my father because God is his father. Hallelujah. The power of the engrafted word. Sinning willfully after the warning. We'll get back into Genesis because that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They sinned willfully after the warning. Forgot your, if you notice, forgot your past sin. Because the Bible teach about past sin, the Bible teach about old sin, the, teach, uh, the Bible teach about was forgiven. Not now forgiven when you are in your sin. We'll get scripture to back it up. Whenever I make a quote, I promise you. I always use scripture to come back to back up what I said. So what happened to us? People lying to us and they've been doing it from the foundation probably of the world. Just so I always uh I'm reminded should I say of John where they went out saying that disciple should not die. Now kind of remind me what we're telling people. 
Once you're in Christ, you'll never go to hell. And then remember, many times people are saying exactly what the Bible never said. That's why John, uh, uh, John, I think it's 21, 20 or 21, not looking at it, I think it's 21, where it said that uh, it went out that that disciple should not die. And it says, nevertheless, Yeshua Jesus never said that disciple should not die. See, that was a lie. He never said it, but that's what went out. It said what he said was, what is that to you? You follow me. Well, what happening today, a lot of, many people, should I say, they're doing exactly what somebody else is doing. But what is that to you? You follow me. Because somebody else is doing it, that does not mean I need to do it. I need to follow him, not try to do what everybody else is doing and people want me to do because that exactly what the devil want you to do. And that's why each and every person have freedom. You don't have to do what other people do when it's evil. Do what people are doing when it's good, when it's right, when it's pleasing in the Lord's sight. But many people want to please people. But I'm a God pleaser. I'm not a man pleaser. I'm not going to do anything to please people when I know it's not of God. And that's the problem. We are people pleasers. We're, we're not concerned about pleasing God. See, you can please people and both of you can end up in hell. But if you please God, you're going to end up where you want to go. I hate it when people call me. They see you on Facebook. Well, excuse me. I need to kill that. When they see you on Facebook, they think you are available. Hopefully it'll go off my iPad too. I don't think it's my phone when it should go off. Ah, let me kill that. I actually have my hat. Sorry about that. I thought I had cut that off. So don't forget, you're only forgiven, and we're going to use scriptures again, just in case I don't get there today. Do not forget, only your past sins are forgiven you. Not your now, unless you confess now. And definite, not your future. When people say all your sins are forgiven you, they're lying to you. Now, if you want to believe a lie, remember freedom to receive the truth and freedom to reject the truth. The Bible says you have forgotten that you was purged from your old sin. That means when we, we come to Yeshua the Messiah, all our old sin are washed away because of that first Adam, we was born ungodly without God. So all of that stuff we did before we came to the Messiah, Everything is washed away. It is behind us. If I sin now, and I, I'm not sinning willfully after I have the knowledge. If I sin now, and I confess my sin, and repent, turn away from it, it's forgiven me. But people, you do the crime, you do the time. That's why I go through that all the time. If we confess. If we agree with God that sin is sin, but if we're not agreeing that sin is sin because some lying spirit says, oh, my sins are forgiven me, past, present, and future, you're listening to a lying spirit, and that is darkness. You'll never find that in your scripture. Never. And that's the problem. So many of us is teaching that. That's why so many pastors are falling. Not only they are the head, you can't go no further than the head <clears throat> if you don't know no more than the head. If the head is in darkness, where do you think you're going to end up? The blind cannot lead the blind people lest they what? Both fall into a ditch. I was listening to YouTube the other day. Because of this Diddy thing. 
And this pastor out of uh, out of Dallas, and he was saying, "You will not believe how many people here in Dallas was hanging around with Diddy and doing some of those like freaky things." Well, we know it's not in Dallas. It's all over. How can someone, I mean, and we have people trying to be light, and they're in darkness? Tell me, how can you be light to someone you're walking in darkness? That's why the Bible says you both going to fall into a ditch. You're trying to teach people what you want to teach them to keep a full house? Don't you know if you're lying to them? If you do not know who Yahshua is, how can you show somebody else how or who Yahshua is? We try, you hear people say, we need to convert the Jews. No, you need to start in your own hometown. You need to be converted. How can you convert somebody else when you're not converted? That's why the Lord said to Son of Peter, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. See, many of us can't strengthen people because we have not been converted. We must receive the truth. We must be able to see for ourselves before I can show you Yahshua the Messiah. Many of us are just, <coughs> excuse me, just, just saying stuff to get a crowd. Saying stuff to make people like us. Well, you think you're going to please everybody teaching the truth? Sorry. You're wrong. If everybody loves you and <clears throat> love what you say, <clears throat> something's wrong. You know why? Everyone did not like what Yahshua said. Let no one love them. Everyone did not like or love what those disciples taught because they didn't teach lies. They taught the truth. They was followers, not just believers. The devil can believe in truth. The devil believed that he trembled, but he's still a devil. I can believe one thing, but that does not mean I believe all things. I'm to believe the engrafted word of God. The Bible teaches us what is required of us, and it teaches us what is not required of us. And those are sacrifices, uh, bulls and goats and animals and wave offering and all that stuff. That stuff was done away with. But what God wrote with his fingers, <laughs> if you think it was done away with, you're in darkness. It's still alive today and sharper than a double-edged sword. Sending willfully after the knowledge. We'll find that in scripture. If we sin... Willfully, after we have the knowledge, we know better. There is no more sacrifice for sin. People, stop letting the devil tell us that. He said, you bring yourselves under bondage. He didn't just say you bring you under bondage. You bring yourselves because you reject what the word of God said. You do not care what the word of God said. You want to do your own thing. You want to believe what you want to believe. You want to believe a lie because lies will not change you. Lies doesn't change anybody. But the truth makes people free if they receive it. And so many of us, I'm sorry, but we don't want the truth. That's why you have mega churches many times. Not all of them, I'm saying. Because some of them are just being lied to. Oh, I gave my life to the Lord, and I don't have to worry about nothing else. You're in darkness, and sooner or later, you're going to fall, because you're listening to darkness, and you won't go no further than the darkness, unless you show yourself strong, get in the Word of God, study for yourself, and go to those people that teaching you lies, and tell them the truth. That's why Yeshua said, when thou are converted. <laughs> strengthen your brother. That's why the Lord said, let him that teaches, teach him that teaches, that the man of God might be perfect. And Peter 
keep saying, oh, no one is perfect but the Lord. Perfect doesn't mean you'll never do anything wrong. It's believe that you're in darkness too. Perfect means to be mature, to be complete. We may sin, come short of the glory of God. But once we confess and repent, we are right back in right standard with God. That's why we acknowledge our sins, not hide our sins. And many of us think we are hiding it from God, but that's why God is trying us. Because he knows exactly what's in our heart. I can say one thing, but God knows what I'm, what's in my heart. That's why the Bible speaks of when people say they love him, they sing in song. He said, I don't even want to hear your songs anymore. Because your heart, your heart's are far away from me. You could say you love me with your lips, but your heart telling me something different. See, that's why he knows what's in the heart. Love means to obey. That's what love is. Love means to obey. God did not just love his son. His son obey that's why god continues to love his son because his son obeyed from the foundation of the world that's why he never sinned he's the second adam from heaven but think about it when we we are born in sin separated from god that's what you call ungodly without god but once we receive yeshua the messiah we are no longer ungodly without God. Sin is no longer credit to our account. Sin is now something that we do. So we can become like the second Adam. We do not practice sin. So if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that go to our Father on our behalf. But one thing I love about what Yeshua said, he said, you don't even have to. He said, I will not even pray for you because my father loves you because you love me. You can go to my father on your own. Just ask it in my name. Why do we think we have the perfect example of a prayer? When we pray, we say what? Our father. Because if you're in Yeshua, his father is your father. His God is your God. That's why he said to Mary, I send to my God and your God. To my father and your father. Because if I'm in God, Yeshua is not my God. Yeshua is my brother. That's why he said, who is my brother, who is my sister, but those who do the will of my father in heaven. So, my God is my Lord and Savior, God. And my God loves me because I love his son, Yeshua the Messiah. Your God, if he is your God, loves you because you continue to love his son and love worketh no ill to his neighbor. That's why he's the offspring of God. He's the offspring, and we're to be the offspring of Yeshua. We're to be lights in the world, not darkness in the world. But many of us say we're in the light, but we are walking in darkness, and those people that we are trying to, so we say help. I think we're trying to make them feel good, but I'm not sure how much we are trying to help them. Because my Bible says he that saves his souls is wise. Sometimes we're not concerned about people's souls. We're concerned about their money. We're concerned about their flesh. And that's why some people like to go to certain churches because their flesh get happy. They might as well have stayed in the nightclub and got happy. Because the church is like a hospital. If you going to a church and that church is not teaching you, then graft the word of God, people, you're in the wrong church. Because they are not concerned about your soul. They're concerned about you showing up and paying your tithes. And God is going to give them what? Double for their trouble. I encourage you. 
study the word of God for yourself. But do not just study, receive it. That we could be like those disciples. We have received your word. And since we received your word, we are obeying your word. See, obedience is better than sacrifice. You can sacrifice your praise. You can sing songs. You can jump and, hop and shout and, and flip over and all that stuff. But boy, boy, if your heart not right, keep on serving the devil because you're not serving the Lord. You're serving yourself. You're making yourself happy. See, God tell us how we are to live. If you love me, promise, keep my <laughs> commandment. That's what love is, people. How can you say you love God and you're not keeping his word? We don't know God. That's why Yeshua said they don't know me. They don't know me. See, you can believe, but do you know? That's why the disciples said, now we, we are sure. Now we not only know, we are sure that thou art the Messiah. We are sure that thou art Christ. But how many of us are sure? We say it, but boy, when you get down to really trying to explain it, you find out <laughs> many people are not sure. Many people do not even know. They just think they know. Kind of like Job. I had heard about thee with the ear, but now my eyes see thee. See, we need to be able to see people in the spirit. We need to be able to see, and we are to confess that which we can see. But many people are not confessing what they can see because they cannot see it. So that's why they're confessing lies, deception, because they can't see it for themselves. Many of us need to be converted before we try to convert anybody else. Amen? Hallelujah. We did not even really get into the lesson, but I'm led by the rush call coach. That's why I said, Holy Ghost, speak. Because we don't know even how to pray as we should. So the Spirit is to intercede on our behalf. I'm just like the Lord said to Moses, who made your mouth? I can put a word in your mouth. And remember, I love that scripture that Yeshua said, you don't know what to say, but your spirit, don't worry about, that's what it says, don't worry about what you're going to say. Then and now, the Lord is going to tell you what to say. And you know it's not you, but the spirit of your father that's speaking through you. See, many of us are, are studying our own doctrine, what we're going to say, how we're going to say it, how well we're going to say it. That doesn't mean you're led by the Spirit of God because he said on word about what you're going to say. When that time comes, you know it's not you, but the Spirit of your Father that speaketh through you. So that's why I say, Speak ye, Rosh HaKosh, Holy Ghost, because I don't know what I'm going to say. I study. I study. I love to study. I search the Word of God, but I never sit there and say, I'm going to say it this way, like this. And like, I don't do that. Why? Because I don't want to speak my own words. Even when I'm, uh, I'm writing something down, I listen for the Spirit tell me how to write it down. What I'm going to say, like here, when I do my outline, like uh, freedom, the freedom to accept or reject spiritual guidance. And it's amazing as I'm studying, like even about Adam, and as I said before, according to the word of God, Adam did not confess. That's what got him in trouble. Until later, he blamed Eve. And sure enough, I go to a scripture in Job that said, he didn't want to be like Adam. Adam hid his sin in his heart. And that's what we do. We think we're hiding from God. We have sin in our heart. Who do you think telling us that we have it in our heart? Satan is never going to tell you you're wrong. Satan is never going to tell you you're lying because he's a liar from the foundation of the world and he loves liars. He's not going to tell you that. Why? Because he wants you right there with him. 
misery love company. No, stop listening to the devil and start listening to the Lord. Stop listening to live spirit and start listening to the Lord. If you're not changing, that means you receive it, but you still believe a lie. You hear it. Sometimes you receive it, sometimes you reject it, but you'd rather believe a lie. And therefore, you're still in darkness. You're going to do what the devil wants you to do. You're not going to do what the Lord wants you to do. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm not a hard teacher. I always say I just teach what the Lord put in my mouth. That's all. Because I'm a God pleaser, not a man teaser. I want to make God happy. Can't make people happy all the time, so why are you trying? Yeshua did not. The disciples did not. So what do you think? If you're trying to make people happy, you're going to miss it. Loving the world more than loving God? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on God upon us. Hallelujah. Once again, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. If we believe on God and believe that God raised him, not himself, that God raised him. That means Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, his son. That's why I say, yeah, <laughs> we believe on God. And believe that God raised him from the dead. We're justified by our faith. If you notice, that's for ungodly people. People that are without God. That's why when you go to the book of Psalms, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment because they never enter the race. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They're going to be separated. And people are saying, I'm a sinner where you will not make it. You must confess your sin, not sin unto death. So that's why I use ungodly and sinners. Sinners are those of us who are in the family of God. That's why Peter says judgment first began with us, those are disciples, at the house of God, God's people. Where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Ungodly and sinners going to appear in hell. Let's go ahead and say it. That's why I said, where shall they appear? And then we say we can't be righteous. And then we sing a song, only the righteous shall see God. We say we can't be perfect. When Yahshua said, be ye perfect for your Father in heaven is perfect. We need to stop saying what the Bible did not say. And, uh, and say it. We need to stop saying what the people says and God did not say it. Stop it. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. I had to correct my sister and one of my friends the other day. Uh, we know nobody can be perfect. I go, that's not true. You can have a perfect heart, but you can't have a perfect flesh because my Bible said David's heart was perfect. Even Solomon's heart was perfect. And then we say we can't be righteous. Elizabeth and Zacharias, Zacharias was what? Righteous. And they kept the commandments of God. And we say we can't keep. And then we say we can do all things through Yeshua Christ who strengthened us. That is what? Going back and forth back and forth, wavering, back and forth. We say what we can do and turn right around, say what we can't do. No, say what you can when God said that you can. Say what you can't do when God said do not do it. That's when you say I can't do that because God said do not. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, honor thy father and thy mother, all those we can do do because he'll never tell you to do what is impossible for, for you to do it. That's why the young man said, I have kept them from my youth. And the Lord still was not finished with it. So let's stop it. Let's stop saying what you can't do. Say what you can do and then go a little step higher. Say what you will do. And don't say if it be the grace of God because it is the grace of God. There's something we don't know. We say if it be the will of God because God give us grace to come out and he give us grace to stay right where we are because we have freedom to obey and we have freedom to disobey. So once again, you're justified by your faith and believe in God. Believe God raised Yeshua from the dead. Then we are to confess that which we believe. If you believe it, speak it. 
Do we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, man believeth, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. You keep confessing until you are delivered from any unbelief. Then you go to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth, that means he that continue to believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, then let us know if we don't continue to believe, people of God, we're going to be damned. Let's receive the word of God. Then 1 John 1 and 9 have an if. If we confess our sin, meaning the word of God, the sin is sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why he said, I'll thoroughly cleanse my floor. That means I'm going to clean you from that stuff. But if you confess and repent, my blood will continue to cleanse you. It's not a one-time thing. It's continuation. Everything is continuation. And then you go to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth, he that continues to believe, he that believeth, and what? Forsake his sin shall have what? Mercy. But he that believeth not shall be what? Shall be damned. That means you can't prosper. So we are to continue to believe so we can prosper. That means go forward. But if we do not confess our sins, we do not believe we need to confess our sins and repent, it's like just like a car in park. You're not going anywhere. That's why I say if you confess. That means it's up to me. I have freedom to do that. Do not let anybody tell you from this day forward, all your sin, past, present, and sins are forgiven you. That's a lie from the pits of hell. That's why I assured and told his own disciples, if you forgive everyone of your trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you. But it used to but work. But if you do not forgive every one of your brothers of their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Now, does that sound like your past, present, and future sins are forgiving you? The devil, this is a lie. No, let's receive the word of God because the word of God is never going to lie to us people. Never. People lie to us, but not the word of God. So receive the word of God with meekness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If anybody have any question or comment, put them out there on Facebook. I will or prayer requests. I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you all so much for joining me. I pray the blessing of the Lord will rest upon you. And let's keep praying for this election. Let's keep praying for the world. Although when we vote, be led by the Spirit and say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Although knowing God's will is not always done, people believe that that's not true. Because we see it in scripture, his will is not always done. Israel wanted a king, just like the other nation. That was not God's will. They had a king, Yeshua, they just couldn't see it. And so sometimes we want to be like everybody else. But no, be led by the Spirit. That's why we have if and thou shalt. And Father, we come before you in the name of Yeshua. I thank you for the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost. Because I don't know how to teach. I just open my mouth and let you teach me and speak through me. So God, I pray that you bless everyone out there today. If anyone is sick among us, oh God, let them know that Yeshua, Jesus went about healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed by the adversary. If anyone is out there, oh God, feel like they can't do your will, oh God, let them know there's nothing impossible for him that continue to believe. 
And God, I thank you for loving us so much that you did something about our sin. You sent your first and only begotten son from the foundation of the world to die for the sin of the whole world. But your will is not just for us to come out of Egypt, out of the world, but your will.